In this video, we're going to be recreating the title effect from the 1978 Superman movie. If this seems kind of random, I made this effect live on stream a few days ago and had a lot of fun doing it and I think it turned out really cool, so I thought I'd make a tutorial about it. So first off, we need the starry background and obviously you could just use a picture of stars or you can make it all in fusion, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to bring down a fast noise, plug it into our media out. So first off, in the color tab, I'm going to change it to gradient, so it's going from black to white. Then I can bring up the detail, the contrast. Now I'm going to bring up the scale to something huge, and actually 20 is not enough, so I think I'm going to bring it to 100. There we go. Now we can just bring down the brightness until it starts to look like stars. The number that works for me is minus 4, but you can play around with the brightness to get more or less stars. So now that we've got our stars, let's add our text. So I'm going to bring down a text node, bring that to the screen, just pressing 2. Then I'm going to type in my title. I can bring up the size a little bit. So we want the shape to be outlined. So in the shading tab, we have all these different elements. So right now we have the solid fill, which is not what we're looking for. So I can disable that, then go to element 2, which is a red outline, which I can enable. Now obviously we don't want it to be red, so in the color I can change it to more of a bluish color. Now we want to make it kind of fly into the screen, so with our text selected I can hit shift space and search for a transform node. This is how you move things around in Fusion. So I think I want it to be at full size, maybe 35 frames in, put a keyframe on the center and the size, then I'll go to the beginning, bring up the size, and I think I want it to be a little bigger than this. Then I will drag it up so that it is off screen. Now if I press play, it starts to fly in. But I want it to keep getting smaller like it's going to the distance. So at the very last frame, I'm going to bring down the size to, I think around that looks good. So now it's flying in and slowly zooming away. Now obviously right now the keyframes are very linear, so it doesn't look that great, but we can fix that. So with our transform node selected, I'm going to go into the spline tab. Then I'm going to make sure I have show only selected tool checked. Then I can press this checkbox to bring up the controls for our transform. I'm going to bring this up a little bit and press this to make them all fill the screen. So I'm going to select our first keyframes and hit F. That'll smooth them out a little bit. Then I can go in and tweak them manually. So I'm going to uncheck the displacement, check that twice so that it's gone. Then in the size, you can zoom in a little bit on that. I just want to make this curve a little bit smoother. So it's more of a line like that. Now there aren't really exact settings for the graph to get it to look good. You're going to have to play around with it a little bit to get something you're happy with. All right, so we're going to make two versions of this, the outline version that's clean and then the version with the trails. So in order to do that, I'm going to take our transform, copy that, then paste it over here, then I can drag our text into that. So now we have two copies that are exactly the same, but in this one, I'm going to go to settings and check motion blur. So if you've seen my Sonic tutorial, the technique to get the trails is exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the quality all the way to 10 and bring up the shutter angle to 360. So there's twice as much motion blur as there'd normally be. Now this can be a little bit computationally expensive. So if it's running slowly, you can bring down the quality to two while you're tweaking settings and then bring it back up to 10 or maybe even 20, depending on what you need for your final render. So now I'm going to add the trails to this using a plugin. It's free, you can get it on Reactor. It's called Echo. If I bring that to the screen, you can already see what it's starting to do. This is already really close to the effect we want. What I want to do is I want to bring the apply mode to screen so it's a bit more glowy and I want the echo frames to be 10 just so that they're a little bit longer. Now I don't want there to be trails throughout the whole thing. I want to stop making new ones once it hits the letters. Once the letters fall into place which is at frame 35. So I'm going to set a keyframe on th frame 35. Then since I have 10 echo frames I'm going to go 10 frames forward and bring them to zero. That'll make them slowly fade out. Now we can see we still have a little bit of stepping between the echoes. So what I can do is I can bring up the subframes to one. That seems to fix them up pretty well. If you still have banding, you could bring it up to something like two. But again, the more subframes you add, the slower it's going to run. So I think this will work fine for now. So now let's add this on top of our normal text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out from our echo and merge that over our first transform. Bring that to the screen and I'll change the apply mode to screen. Now since we have it set to screen, the text is a little bit brighter than it was before. So what I can do is I'm going to find the frame where the echoes all disappear, which is frame 45, set a keyframe on the blend, 
then go maybe 10 frames later and bring down the blend all the way. So it slowly transitions back into its original color. Then I can merge this over our fast noise. Again, set the apply mode to screen. Now this isn't something that's in the original movie, but I think it looks pretty nice, is after all this, I can add a soft glow, bring up the glow size a ton, and bring down the gain a lot. Just so that you have a subtle glow over everything. I think it looks pretty nice. And that's how you make the Superman titles all in DaVinci Resolve. James Gunn, you are free to use this for your Superman movie if you want. If you have any suggestions for more movie titles I could try, do leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to look at those. And if you want to check out more DC effects, then you can check out this video right here, where I show you how to run like the Flash in DaVinci Resolve.